Welcome to the Azure Data Explorer Shorts. I'm Vincent with the Azure Data Explorer team. Today, we're gonna to talk about managed ingestion. Managed ingestion, sometimes we call it queued ingestion, and we are gonna contrast that to unmanaged ingestion. And to understand what it is, let's look at a visual model. So when we think about an Azure Data Explorer cluster, we think about some compute processing queries. So we have users, sending KQL queries to the engine and responds with data. This is the large part of a custo exploration where send queries and get insights from the data. Now this querying process is not fundamentally reliable. If something goes wrong with the engine, we're gonna get an error back and then we're gonna try the query again and get a result hopefully. And this is okay because in the design of Cousteau, we privilege speed over reliability for queries. And that's a normal thing because we want to have quick interaction with the engine. So when we do a query, we don't push that to a persistent queue and schedule it for execution. We just query the data. This is why one of the reasons why Cousteau is very, very fast. Now above sending queries, we can also send commands to the engine. So we can send command to modify the schema, to create tables, to alter functions and that type of thing but we can also send commands to ingest data. So ingest inline, set a table, append table, set or append, send or replace, ingest into table will allow us to ingest data. Those commands when used by a user, this is what we call unmanaged ingestion. Now, like the queries, they are run synchronously and when they fail, they are not retried. They are not persisted anywhere and fundamentally it's best effort. And many things can happen in a cluster. Maybe a machine can go down. Maybe the cluster itself is shut down. Those ingestion will be canceled and that will be the end of it. Now, just opening a parenthesis, all those commands accept the async keyword. So when we say async, Sometimes people think that means it's reliable. It's queued somewhere, it's run asynchronously in the background and will be able to run for a very long time without interruption. That's not what the async keyword does. The async keyword simply terminates the HTTP request and returns a job ID. If we look at the documentation and just from query, we get those commands. I'm gonna async keywords there. Let's just show a quick example of the use of async. So we could have a table, let's say authors with a very simple schema, takes an ID, takes a name, and we create that table. Then let's ingest inline into table authors, ID one and author Socrates. Boom, we just ingested the data into an extent. So if we look at the table now, it should have one row. Perfect. Now. Let's talk about another table. So let's do a set or replace on the table author two. And here what I'm saying basically is ingest and create if needed the table author two and ingest the, the content of the table authors into it. And I'm gonna add the keyword async and returns immediately an operation ID. So what I could do with that Let's do a show operations, the operation ID in question. And we say we have a set table replace and the state is completed. Now that command ran like any command is just that it didn't hold the HTTP connection of my HTTP request. And that's it. So if I look at authors2, I look at author2, I see the same content. So just to demonstrate that async doesn't solve the reliability problem inherent with anything sent to a cluster. So now let's come back to our model. So we have our engine, and now we know that sending ingestion commands like that, they, they work, we just, we just used it, but they're not super reliable in a production pipeline type of scenario. They could fail and eventually they will fail us. Of course, we could do retries from the outside, but natively ADX has a solution for that. It's called the data management service that connects to the engine and can ingest data into it. So Azure Data Explorer already has its own orchestration engine that can take care of that. 
and add reliability on top of the engine. And we can see that in the documentation. If we look at data ingestion overview, and look at this diagram, very similar to what we just seen. And we can see on the left, all the different ways you can interact with the data management service. They all use some form of managed ingestion. They connect to the data management. They queue the data that needs to be ingested and the data management take care of it. The cluster goes down. If something goes wrong, if storage account has a service outage or something, it will reliably retry the ingestion. So it's basically fire and forget. Once we talk to the data management, we have a guarantee that it's going to be ingested. So what are the advantages of using managed ingestion? Well, we've seen retries. We've talked about retries. We'll talk about throttling, but let's first talk about monitoring and others. So data management service will emit some metrics so we can monitor the metrics and we can monitor the logs and with metrics monitoring comes others. So we can set up others if you know ingestion failure occurs too often, for instance. Now to talk about throttling, we need to talk about the capacity of a cluster. So let's go back to the cluster here and let's try a command show capacity. This shows different capacity of the cluster. The most important one for our topic today is the first one, suggestion. This is controlled by the capacity policy, but we don't recommend change it. In this case, I have a small cluster, it's a dev SKU, and has only one for capacity. That means there's one slot. It can ingest one bunch of data at a time. Bigger cluster will have bigger capacity, but the point is that a cluster doesn't take all the ingestion we throw at it. It takes a certain amount of data that will process at the same time, and then we'll wait to have some slot available. Those are called ingestion slots to be available to process some more data. So now that we've seen that, we can talk about throttling. To talk about throttling, I'll take an example where a cluster has two slots of ingestion just for visualization purposes. As I mentioned, the bigger your cluster, the more ingestion slots you will have. So those are our two ingestion slots. And let's say we do unmanaged ingestion. So we'll first throw one blob. It will be treated while that's happening. We're gonna ingest another blob, so maybe another user is doing another inline ingestion, and then the first blob ends, and the second blob ends. Data is ingestion, perfect. A bit like the example we gave. Like we did inline ingestion, everything went okay. Now let's say that morning, there's a bit more activity happening on the cluster, so we do ingest a third blob, a fourth blob, and then the fifth blob, boom. The fifth blob is throttle. It is rejected. We still will return like, I got too much on my plate. I can't handle it anymore. So this is with unmanaged ingestion. And that's one of the problems that you'll run into if you do unmanaged ingestion. Managed ingestion, you can imagine there's a queue somewhere managed by the data management service. And when we want to ingest data, the data is sent to the queue. So it's first sent to the queue, then it's sent for processing, this process of some more. So there's never a time that the data get throttled because it's managed by a queue. So like any queue architecture, the queue takes care of this buffer if we don't have capacity. But now while this managed ingestion is happening, if somebody does an unmanaged ingestion, boom, it will be throttled. And this is a case we see in production where we have pipelines running. If somebody comes and push something, it might or might not be throttled. That's why once we opt for managed ingestion, it's good to go all the way so that no, no ingestion will be left to chance be left to the fact that, okay, at three o'clock in the morning, maybe my cluster is okay. Use managed ingestion, you won't have to care about that. Another thing is that we maximize the cluster utilization when we do that, because the cluster will ingest as much data as it can, as opposed to if we use unmanaged ingestion, we might schedule a job at some point. So, okay, let's throw five, five blobs to be ingested over here, then wait a little bit until they're processed. I don't know how long, and throw another five and things like that because we're too scared of overloading the cluster. If we use queued ingestion, we're sure that the cluster will work as much as it can. And those capacity slots that I showed are configured in a way that when the cluster is ingesting a lot of data, it's still able to answer two queries. So it's a great way to use the cluster to its capacity. When some transient failures have happened, the data management service will retry. As mentioned, we have metrics on ingestion with metrics come out. So takeaways of what we discussed today. Use managed ingestion for automated tasks and use on managed ingestion only for ad hoc manipulation. And finally, do monitor your ingestion. Set up alerts, look at your dashboard. Don't wait for your users to tell you that there's no data in your table. If you have any questions or comments about the topic we discussed today, please leave them down below. In the meantime, follow us on those social media platforms. And until next time, 